bin number 5500055. In 1955, Porsche made a 550 Spider, number 130, and this car has absolutely become the most famous 550 in history due to the events that follow. It all started on September 21st, 1955, when Dean traded his 55 356 Speedster for his 555 Spider. Now the first thing every celebrity does is they want their car to be tricked out, even to this day. And Dean was no different, and he enlisted the help of the legend himself, George Barris, the creator of famous cars such as Kit and the Batmobile. So as the story goes, he customized the seats, added the number 130 to make it look the part of a race car, and named the car the Little Bastard. Stories do differ on this though, as there is paperwork proving Barris was not involved, and the pinstriping was a factory pinstripe, as well as the letters and the number were done by a pinstripe artist named Dean Jeffries. On September 23rd, 1955, Dean met his friend Alec Guinness, more famously known as Obi-Wan Kenobi or Lawrence of Arabia. And this is where the story starts to get weird. Guinness was later quoted in his unpublished diaries where he wrote, the sports car looked sinister to me, exhausted, hungry, feeling a little ill-tempered in spite of Dean's kindness. I heard myself saying in a voice I could hardly recognize as my own, please don't get in it. If you get in that car, you'll be found dead in it by this time next week. Lo and behold, seven days later, on September 30th, 1955, Dean and his mechanic stopped at Blackwell's Corner on Route 466 to meet up with their friends Lance Reventlo and Bruce Kessler. Reventlo was driving a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Coupe, and they were also competing in the Salinas Road Race. At approximately 5.15, Dean and Hickman drove towards Paso Robles. A half hour later, a black and white 1950 Ford Tudor was headed east on 466, driven by 23-year-old Donald Turnipspeed. Turnipspeed made a left on Route 41. As he crossed the center line, Dean, who was estimated to be traveling at 85 miles per hour, tried to avoid the Ford, and the two cars met head-on. The Ford Coupe slid 39 feet down Route 466 in the westbound lane. Soon afterward, an unconscious and dying Dean was placed into an ambulance. Dean's passenger, Rolf Wolthrich, who had been thrown from the spider and was laying on the shoulder of the road next to Little Bastard, was transported in the same ambulance to the War Memorial Hospital, nearly 30 miles away. Dean was pronounced dead on arrival at 6.20, and Turnip Speed walked away with no injuries except for a scratch on his nose. Now there's two versions of the events that happened next. One of them is George Barris purchased the wrecked Porsche for $2,500 with the intent to sell tickets to look at it. And on the way back to his shop, the car slipped off a trailer and broke the leg of a mechanic. Alternatively, Dean's insurance company allegedly sold the car to Dr. William F. Estrich and Troy McHenry, who stripped parts for their own race cars, while selling the remaining parts to George Barris. Now, once George Barris had the car in his possession, stories started coming out of souvenir hunters breaking in and trying to steal parts off the car. There's even a story of one gentleman attempting to remove the blood-soaked seat and injuring himself in the process. Now, all this bad luck wasn't just following the body of Little Bastard, but allegedly it was following the parts as well. McHenry's car collided with a tree, which ended up taking his life, and Estrich's car had the wheels lock up while coming around a turn, causing the car to lose control. 
It is also said that Barris sold some wheels off Little Bastard, and both tires simultaneously blew up, causing the car to run off the road. It was at this point Barris decided to hide the wreck of Little Bastard. Unfortunately, he was later convinced by the California Highway Patrol to let them use the car as a highway safety exhibit. This was unsuccessful because at the first exhibit it was displayed at, the entire place burned down, leaving the little bastard car untouched. And at the second exhibit, it fell off the stage and broke a student's hip, or so the story goes. Let me reiterate, we don't actually know how much of this is true. A lot of this is just hearsay and rumors. But apparently a man named George Barkus was killed while the little bastard was being transported and was crushed in ways we aren't sure of. And then there was also another instance where it was reported that the transport truck towing little bastard had a brake failure causing it to roll down a hill and collide with another vehicle. In New Orleans, in 1959, it was reported the car split in half. And then finally, in 1960, five years later, the truck hauling little bastard vanished on its way back to Los Angeles. And that was that. The car was never seen again. To this day, many people have claimed they have found Little Bastard. There's even a man who claims to remember seeing it hidden away when he was only six years old. That man wants $500,000 to prove the whereabouts of the car. But no one stepped up. The Volo Museum has offered $1 million to purchase the car if it is ever found. So if you have any information, contact them. I'm Dallas Holiday, and thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear future episodes of Automotive History, give us a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.